Thank you once again for joining me on Obasic Universal Statisticals. On today's video tutorial, I shall be showing you how to test and remove autocorrelation or serial correlation using eViews. Basically, how to detect and remove autocorrelation problems okay, that exist in a particular result using eViews. Okay, coming down straight to our eViews page here, we we'll have um, the variables of interest, we we'll have exchange rate, we we'll have inflation rate, we we'll have our GDP. Okay, the EX. EXR here stands for exchange rate, INF stands for inflation rate, RGDP stands for real gross domestic product. Okay, I shall be showing you how to correct, how to test first of all for serial or autocorrelation and also how to correct it using eViews. Okay, for us to do that, simply click quick, go to estimate equation, then you regress your dependent variables on your independent variables. So we we'll have RGDP, okay, space C, space we we'll have EXR, which is one of our independent variables. Then we we'll have INF, which is the second independent variables. Okay. Now we're going to run the OLS of this and check for evidence of um, autocorrelation. Okay. Ensure that your met is your hunter method here on least squares. Okay. You on least squares. Then simply click OK. Now once you click OK, you have your regression results here. You have your exchange rate. You have your inflation rate under your variables. We have the coefficient standard error, the statistic, and probability values. R square and other star R square. However, we are really interested in checking for autocorrelation in this model as well as serial correlation. As you can see here, looking at the Rossing value of 1.056186 here, it clearly shows us there is evidence of autocorrelation in this model. The reason being that for a Rossing statistic to be acceptable and free from autocorrelation, the value must lie between 1.5 and 2.0. As you can see, this clearly lies outside that particular range of 1.5 and 2.0. 2.0, which shows there's evidence of autocorrelation in this particular uh, regression result. Now let's check for evidence of serial correlation also. But before we do that, we can as well save this result. Simply click freeze, then select name. We can call this regression one. Okay, we'll call this regression one. Click OK. Then you can as well close this. Now let's check for another form of um, serial correlation here from this result. Simply click view. Okay, go to residual diagnostics, select relevant pure statistics. This relevant pure statistics and serial LM test are two forms of testing for serial correlation using eViews. Okay, let's start with relevant pure statistics. You click it once. Lags will include 16. I'll leave it at default. Click OK. As you can see here, most of the probability values here are less than 0 0.05. Clearly showing you know, there is evidence of serial correlation in this regression result. As you can see, most of them here are less than 0 0.05, simply sh clearly showing that there is evidence of serial correlation using the correlation Q statistics. So I'm going to save these results for us to compare by the time we correct it. Click simply click freeze, then select name. or will call this maybe correlation Q. Okay, and simply click OK. You can as well close this. Now let's test using serial LM test. Simply click view. Residual diagnostic select serial correlation LM test. Okay, last to include to leave it at default. Click OK. Looking at the F statistics and observe arrow square, as you can see, the property values are both less than 0 0.05. Showing that there is evidence of serial correlation in this particular result also. Okay, there is evidence of serial correlation in this result also. All right, for us to save, simply click freeze. Then click name here. Then we'll call this serial, maybe serial LM. Okay, then click OK. Then you can as well close this. Okay, now we've discovered there is evidence of serial correlation in this result. We've tested and have seen there's evidence of serial correlation in this particular result. For us to correct it, simply click estimate again to go back to your model specification. Under this model specification here, you enter one more variable, okay, as independent variable. This time around, you enter the one period lag of the dependent variable, the one period lag of the dependent variable as one of your independent variables. For you to do that, simply click space, then R, GDP, then open bracket, minus one, okay? R, GDP, sorry, open bracket, minus one, okay? R, GDP, the one period lag of the dependent variable, you add it as one of your independent variables. That exchange rate, inflation rate, then R, GDP, one period lag of the R, GDP. Okay, you ensure your method is on least square again. Simply click OK. Now, once you click OK, you have your results here. You discover the RGDP one period lag have been added as one of your independent variables. Now, you simply go to your Dubuisian value. As you can see here, it has improved from what it was before. You can as well cross check or compare with the previous one here. 
okay we have the previous results here as you can see here clearly okay, i'm trying to adjust this so that we can be able to see good as you can see the previous result when there was autocorrelation gave a value of 1.056186 however after adding the one period lag of the dependent variable it has improved 1.851304 which clearly shows that the autocorrelation problem has been corrected here it lies between the acceptable range of 1.5 to 2.0 as you can see here you can as well close this okay now let's take for correlation q statistics okay another form of serial correlation simply go to click view residual diagnostics select correlation q statistics you click it once lags to include 16 are leave it at default as you can see most of them or rather even all of the probability values here are now greater than 0 0.05 showing that there is no evidence of serial correlation in this model we can as well look at the previous result we had okay as you can see here it has been corrected okay looking at the two of them here you discover it has been corrected so there's no evidence of serial correlation in this particular model it has been corrected okay we can look at serial lm test too to check residual diagnostic select serial lm test you click it once last to include two a little bit at default looking at the f statistics and observed r square you see that the two probability values are now greater than 0.05 showing that there is no evidence of serial correlation in this model okay you can as well look at the previous one we have we estimated earlier okay as you can see it has been corrected look at the previous one showing there is evidence of serial correlation however after correcting it you see there's no more problem of serial correlation in this particular model okay as you can see here this is basically the fastest and easiest way of correcting serial correlation in a particular regression result in case you have any issue as regards to that okay in case you have any problem that involves serial correlation this is the best way to correct it however i also need to mention here that if you are looking at possibly like an um, ARDL model and there is evidence of serial correlation in it what you simply need to do is to increase the number of uh, lags okay by simply clicking view for instance go to restorer diagnostics and uh, serial lm test you simply click the increase the lags if there is a problem of serial correlation using ARDL model you can increase the lags to maybe four or six and cross check okay but since we are looking at ordinary least square result we'll leave it at this okay basically this is how to correct the problem of serial correlation using e views okay if this is your first time of coming to our channel to watch this video okay kindly click the subscribe button to get more video updates on analysis all right thank you for watching